agriculture takes a huge toll on the environment. But there is a way to make it more eco-friendly that has literally been around for thousands of years. And it has to do a lot with these seemingly boring but surprisingly powerful trees. Right, buddy? Industrial agriculture has major environmental drawbacks. 26% of all global greenhouse gas emissions come from agriculture. Its crop monoculture suck out all the nutrients out of the soil and lastly agriculture takes up enormous amounts of land. So how are some random trees supposed to help with all that? It's called agroforestry. The system combines conventional farming of crops and animals with different types of trees. And apparently it reduces emissions, requires less fertilizer and it's even scalable. I mean, that's like winning the environmental lottery. To find out if that actually is the case, I'm visiting Jochen Hartmann. His family has lived here for 19 generations, yet he's one of the first to adopt what's known as the alley cropping system in Germany. Bäume auf dem Acker, das hat man wahrscheinlich auch nicht so in der Ausbildung gelernt, ne? Genau, was wir da machen, ist wirklich gewöhnungsbedürftig, auch man selber. Man denkt, das haben wir, was machst du hier eigentlich? Weil wir haben ja gelernt, große Flächen sind geiler, ne? Wo man sagt, aber ähm, ja, jetzt machen wir sie kleiner. Ne? Und das ähm, ist eine Überwindung, aber es ist auch toll. Jochen opted to plant poplars across his fields. They grow fast, are easy to manage and cover about 10% of his 200 hectares. They are mixed with his crops and hence where we are headed now. In fünf Jahren ne, haben die, diese Pappeln jetzt äh, die, die, die gewachsen. They are about 10 meters tall now, meaning there's a lot of CO2 stored inside them. The ability of trees to absorb CO2 and mitigate climate change is a major selling point for agroforestry. And they also work great in combination with hens. 500 of them. And you see like that immediately after they come out of the truck, they start to eat. So they are not only eating what they would be fed in a conventional farming method, but they eat what they find out here. And that's really sustainable because most of the CO2 emissions associated with raising chickens comes from their feed. And when you do it like this, you don't have to grow it elsewhere. What otherwise would be done in three separate places, raising chicken, growing food and trees is now done in one place, which reduces land use. The tree's leaves also offer protection from predators and create a cool place where the birds can take a quick nap. Once the leaves fall, the hands trample them into the ground, which helps the soil regain nutrients. To be clear, this doesn't free these hands of their environmental impact. Some of their feed is still grown in monocultures. But at least in this case, some of the CO2 that is emitted along the supply chain is being compensated by the trees on the same land as these chickens grow up. Right, buddy? One study says that converting 9% of Europe's farming land into agroforestry systems could offset between 2 and 43% of all European agriculture CO2 emissions. The range is so wide because agroforest types can vary tremendously, from small hedgerow systems that store next to no CO2 to large tree systems. But if we are looking only at our systems we have here, like these alley cropping systems, we would say we are around 1, 1.5 tons per hectare um, carbon sequestration. This is Dr. Sonja Kay. She has been researching all kinds of agroforests for the past six years, also assessing their CO2 mitigation potential in an EU-funded study. And when we are comparing that with the total carbon amount emissions we have in Europe, then we are around 10% of the agriculture part which we could store with or we, which we could mitigate with agroforestry systems. Still a great potential. There is one caveat though. 
if the trees that are grown are used as firewood, like these will be in the future, about 70% of carbon dioxide is re-released into the atmosphere, which kind of goes against the idea of carbon sequestration. These trees will be chopped down to about 20 centimeters above ground once they are fully grown. Nevertheless, underground the trees have other positive effects beside the CO2 storage above ground. They can add to the soil's quality and potentially reduce fertilizer usage and emissions. Yes, modern agriculture solving the problems it created, you would think. Agroforestry is actually ancient. Different forms of it can be traced back thousands of years. In these medieval paintings you can see pigs being released into the forest to feed on different types of nuts. Or Indian home gardens that combine different ground crops with tall trees even date back to 7000 BCE. It disappeared largely in the first half of the 20th century because it was seen as inefficient. Scattered trees didn't really work well with tractors and large farming machinery. Because Jochen's poplars worked so well for his hands, he decided to extend the system across all his fields. These were planted a couple of months ago and the wheat needs to be pulled, otherwise the trees wouldn't make it. In the first year in particular, agroforestry strips are more labor intensive. Genau, also wir haben ja we weniger Fläche, aber wir ernten nachher ja auch hier Holz. Und du merkst jetzt ja gerade den Wind und die Wärme. Und wenn das hier drei Wochen noch weitergeht, dann wird es hier langsam trocken. Und äh, durch die Bäume haben wir einen Windschutz. Ne? Und äh, wir halten die äh, Feuchtigkeit eher hier in der Fläche. Und da äh, bin ich ganz äh, optimistisch, dass im Schnitt nachher der Ertrag dann doch noch passt. Ne? This protection from wind erosion becomes a little more visible on a more mature field. The trees basically block the wind from blowing right across all the fields, preventing nutrient and moisture rich soil from being blown away. Some yield is lost at the sides because the trees also want their share of water, but it's balanced out in the middle. And even though it might not look like it, these trees can boost biodiversity. Ja, bei Wind hast du immer, dass die sich schnell verstecken so ein bisschen. <lacht> Aber die Schwebfliegen, das sind auch Nützlinge. Genau, da, da sind, guck mal, da sind ein paar. Ja. Especially da, for insects, worms and fungi. Da, hier, der Mistkäfer hier. Ah. Oder rollt der? Der rollt. Aber so richtig viel Insekten sind jetzt auch nicht da im Pappelstreifen, ne? Genau, Geduld. Wir haben ja erst im letzten Jahr angesät. Wir werden jetzt noch mal einen mehrjährigen Blühstreifen rechts und links ansehen. Ähm, äh, als Pufferstreifen. Und vor allem auch, weil wir die, die ersten drei, äh, drei Meter können wir schlecht ernten einfach äh, bei den Pappeln. Und da machen wir jetzt einen mehrjährigen Blühstreifen. Der hat dann nochmal doppelt Sinn da. Ja, dann legen wir los. Legen wir los, ne? <lacht> so. This helps creating a better habitat for wild bees. So it's not just about sticking some poplars between two monocultures, really. Wenn man die in Streifen macht und gut einmisst, ist es für die großen Maschinen überhaupt kein Problem. Also sie stören nicht und bringen uns eigentlich nur Vorteile mit der Winderosion. Und ja, ich bin mal gespannt, wie es in den nächsten Jahren hier aussieht. The system can be scaled up easily for even bigger farms, like here in Spain or Kenya. But it's also practiced on smaller farms in countries where agriculture is more fragmented, like here in India. So if agroforestry has so many advantages, why don't we just convert every farm into an agroforest? There are some areas where we should not plant trees. The soil is too, it's not thick enough. Um, so the, the ground, the trees cannot stand there or something like that. So really, if you're, before you're starting growing agroforestry, you should be aware that you check if it's possible or not. The soil of watery rice fields or hilly regions can present a challenge for trees. Besides which, the initial costs of establishing an agroforestry system is quite high and isn't subsidized in Germany yet. 
Agroforestry is a great system with a lot of potential. Bringing animals, crops and trees together also makes our agriculture more resistant to extreme weather, which will be really useful in the future. But it's also not the one solution to all of our problems. Still, compared to conventional agriculture, it's a really good starting point for more sustainable farming. Ah! 